Okay, we're, we're here today with Gregory McGuire, who has a brand new book out called What the Dickens, the Story of a Rogue Tooth Fairy. It's a wonderful book. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about it. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You know, I, I don't think a lot of people know because of your wild success with books like Wicked and, and The Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister and a lot of your adult-oriented books that you are a very accomplished children's author as well with a number of titles there. Um, it seems like to some degree some of that because of your other fame has been a little bit under the radar. Well, I think so. I started out as a writer for children and have never really given up at that job because I think it's an important thing to do if you care about the quality of children's mm -hmm. lives. But when I began to break into the adult market, my adult editor said, if we signal on book jackets that you have written for children, grandparents might buy books like Wicked or Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister for their third graders. And the books, those books are stuffed with sex and religion and politics and not yet appropriate for a third grader. So the publishers rather sensibly said, let's treat this as if you just come out of nowhere. And they presented me like a new find. Uh, I protested a little bit, but they won. And maybe, maybe they were right for that reason. But I never gave up writing for children during all the time that my adult career was taking off. Because as I say, what children get when they begin to read may have to last them their whole life long. Many people don't read for pleasure after the age of 14. They read for school, they read for work, or they stop reading entirely. So it's important to get them the absolute best you can before the age of 14. And you were a big reader when you were growing up, is that the case? I was a huge reader when I was growing up because my parents were clinically mean. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were dictatorial, yeah. they believed in the power of books, and they pulled the plug on the TV. They told the six siblings and, and myself that we were allowed to watch TV one half hour a week. We had to vote on it. Every, ha every week we voted on Gilligan's Island. And it was, uh, it was unanimous? It w well, it was unanimous. This says something about the power of democracy, <laughs> but it also says something about the lowest common denominator, you know, when you get a bunch of kids who make their own choices. Yeah. On the other hand, we went to the library and the choices were endless. So we read across the spectrum of quality. We read stuff that wasn't very good, we read stuff that was okay, and then we read stuff that we remembered for the rest of our lives. And now you're a parent, you have children of your own, you decided to like loosen up, or how do you raise your children? I am the meanest parent on the block, <laughs> it's, it's true. We let the kids watch videos on the weekends yeah. if they've done their reading all So week they're readers long. now too, though? They're, they're, they're struggling readers. It yeah. doesn't come easy to them. It came easy to me, it doesn't come easy to them, but all the more reason to give them the time to uh, refresh themselves with a book, to relax with a book, and to find themselves there however long it takes. Yeah, well that's a wonderful way to do it.